Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rich Bradley, President of the Board of Public Service. This is the regular meeting of the Board of Public Service for Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. This is a public meeting and there are no lettings today, but we do have one hearing which we will handle at this time. Hearing number 109696 is being conducted pursuant to section 26.100.030 of the revised code of the city of St. Louis. The purpose of this hearing is to determine whether to revoke the conditional use permit number 109696 issued to DBA St. Louis American Salvage CO Reginald Simmons to occupy 1814 North Van Avenger, also known as 1800 North Van Avenger, as a salvage towing office sales car outside storage business. The parties have been notified of the violations of the conditions of this conditional use permit in writing by certified mail, along with the posted notice of today's hearing. This hearing has been convened in order to address the issues surrounding conditions number three and number four as follows. Condition number three, upon arrival, all tires will be removed from vehicles before being offered for salvage. Tires will be stored inside exclusively and unusable tires disposed of on a biweekly basis. Condition number four, all vehicles before being offered for salvage will be placed on racks to keep vehicles off the ground. The Office of the Zoning Administrator has the burden to prove the conditional use permit conditions have not been complied with. After all evidence of the Zoning Administrator has been presented, the board will ask for any additional testimony, if any, in support of the revocation. Then the conditional use holder will be given an opportunity to present evidence Lastly, the board will hear other testimony in opposition to the revocation, if any. The testimony today is being recorded. When you come forward, please state your name and address and be sworn in. As you testify, please direct your comments to the board and not to those in the audience. Members of the audience are asked to remain silent and not coach the witnesses. During your testimony, members of this board may have questions for you. Following the hearing, the board will proceed with its regular agenda. Following the conclusion of the regular agenda, the board will deliberate, discuss, and vote on the hearing. The board will notify the conditional use holder of its decision by mail in about two weeks. The Board of Public Service has in its possession the following documents, which are hereby being introduced into evidence. Item 1, a certified copy of the Zoning Code of the City of St. Louis. Item 2, the conditional use permit number 109696 issued on February 22nd, 2005 for St. Louis American Salvage to occupy 1814 North Van Avenger as a salvage towing office sales car part outside storage business. Item 3, a letter dated September 27th, 2023 sent certified mail to DBA St. Louis American Salvage, CO Reginald Simmons at 1800 North Van Avenger regarding revocation of conditional use permit number 109696, notifying the permit holder of the violations of the permit and providing notice of the public hearing on October 17, 2023. Item four. A letter dated September 27, 2023, sent by certified mail to DBA St. Louis American Salvage, CO James Simmons and Rhonda Brandscombe at 1800 North Van Avenger regarding the revocation of conditional use permit number 109696, notifying the permit holder of the violations of the permit and providing notice of the public hearing on October 17, 2023. Item five, a letter dated September 27, 2023, sent certified mail to Jane Simmons and Rhonda Brandscombe at 6122 North Sheridan Road, P. 
Peoria, Illinois 61614 regarding revocation of conditional use permit number 109696, notifying the permit holder of the violations of the permit and providing notices of the public hearing on October 17, 2023. Item six, a memorandum dated September 26, 2023 from the zoning specialist, Sandra Long, to the zoning administrator, Mary Hart Burton, stating that on September 26, 2023, Ms. Long found a violation of condition number three, as there were cars with tires still on and condition number four, as there were vehicles being stored on the ground with the accompanying photos. Item seven, a copy of the public notices of today's hearing in the city journal dated October 3rd, 2023, October 10th, 2023, and October 17th, 2023. And finally, item eight, a copy of an email dated August 2nd, 2023 from Sandra Long to Dan Complin regarding complaints about the property. At this time, the board asks the representative of the Office of Zoning Administrator to please come forward and be sworn in. Okay. Thank you. The testimony that you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? It is. Thank you. Please state your name for the board. Thank you. Uh, Dylan Mosier, uh, I'm actually the deputy building commissioner, so we, my office sees, oversees all operations of the building division, which would include uh, the zoning office. Uh, as many of you know, I've served in the zoning office for uh, more than seven years prior to this position. Deputy, deputy commissioner, can you please tell the board about possible violations in question at this time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I went out on site um, at about 11 o'clock uh, in the morning yesterday. Um, I actually didn't walk on to the facility itself. Um, I actually flew a drone, I would say approximately 100 feet up in the air um, and took some aerial photography. Um, and then I drove the parameter of the facility um, so as part of my investigation of the four conditions, um, uh, nothing's really changed from my understanding. Uh, the first two conditions uh, were complied with, which talks about emptying vehicles of gasoline, oil, uh, other fluids and whatnot. Um, and it's actually not so much that um, I know that it was in compliance, but rather um, had no way of verifying that it was not in compliance. Um, and then uh, we did verify that a visual concealment fence uh, was actually erected around the entire perimeter of the salvage yard area. So uh, conditions one and two can continue to be in compliance to our understanding. Um, however, conditions number three and condition number four, uh, condition three reading upon arrival, all tires will be removed from vehicles before being offered for salvage. Tires will be stored inside exclusively and unusable tires will be disposed of on a bi-weekly basis. Uh, so with this uh, condition, um, the notable thing that we saw, or I should say I saw, um, and you can see in the photos that I took, uh, is that there persist to be vehicles on the salvage yard that are still uh, attached to the vehicles that are you know, inside the salvage yard. Um, and then condition number four, all vehicles before being offered for salvage will be placed on racks to keep vehicles off the ground. Uh, again, in the aerial photo that I provided to you all, you'll see um, vehicles that are directly on the ground, not on racks. So uh, no change from the zoning perspective. If anybody has any questions for me, please let me know. Okay, I'll start off and then I will ask the board if they have any questions. So I guess, you know, you have you actually been inside the salvage yard or have you just flown a drone from the air over the top of it i personally have not I, i've flown a drone over it uh twice now so you you know that there are tires on vehicles but you don't know if they've taken any off and stored any is that correct yeah i mean i i, I know that there are vehicles that have not had the uh tires removed which is sort of the crux of how we know the condition is in violation. Um, but I, I don't really know the full extent if they're removing some tires. Um, you know, doing an analysis of the photo that I took, I didn't really see too many vehicles that didn't have the tires removed from it, but I'm 
making some amount of speculation there. Okay. And then in the second question I have is looking at your pictures and looking at um, aerial photography of the site, I don't see any wrecks on the site at all where cars are stacked up. Is that correct? That is my same in, in, you know perspective. I, I look at my photo, I, I see zero racks. Um, I haven't done a full analysis, you know, walking on foot through the entire facility. So there may be some corner. I mean, it's a salvage yard, so it's a very busy, you know, visual experience or whatever. But uh, but yeah, it doesn't appear to me that there are any. And there certainly are some vehicles that are not on racks. So we know that that condition is indeed in violation by that. Thank you. Um, does are there any other questions from any of our board members for Deputy Commissioner um, Dylan Mosier? Okay, seeing none. Thank you, sir, for your testimony. At this time, if there's anyone else present who wishes to testify, the noted conditions have not been complied with. Please come forward and be sworn in at this time. So you would be testifying in support of this revocation. I don't see anyone in the chat. I don't see anyone else on the screen. Michelle, is there anyone else in the room with you? No. Okay. So at this time, let the record reflect that there's no one present for this hearing who wishes to testify uh, in support of the revocation. So at this time, the board asked a conditional use permit holder, please come forward and be sworn in. And I think I see a couple of individuals on the screen. So Michelle, will you please swear them in? Sure, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give before this board is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the board. James Simmons, 6122 North Sheridan, Peoria, Illinois, 61614. Okay. Ron Branscombe, 6122 North Sheridan, Peoria, Illinois, 61604. Okay, thank you both. So what we'll do is let's take you each one at a time so we can get a chance to hear from each of you. And so, um, Mr. Simmons, would you please uh, begin and you can, you know, talk to the board and respond to the uh, violations of the conditions that you just heard Deputy Commissioner uh, describe, please. Uh, and... Uh... For what from what he described, uh, we were under the impression that our that since we were grandfathered in uh, from a, from our original name under St. Louis Metal and Recycling, and we do storage that we can store vehicles as just as we get them. If we're if we have to put them on the racks, it do, you know for us we don't I don't understand that. And how am I going to put? Because uh, we buy all types of vehicles, we buy cars, dump trucks, any type of various vehicles. So if I have to put them all on a rack, how am I to put a dump truck on a rack to store it? Additionally, um, my question is, is that we, we pull these uh, vehicles, we break them down for scrap. So we pull the wire out of them. We have to pull um, the motors out of them. And if we're putting them up and down and up and down on racks, um, that, 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 that doesn't really work with this business that we're doing. And I know that the scrap industry has involved, evolved. And so things have changed and from uh, probably 2005 or whenever the initial um, um, the permit sign. was issued. Yeah. So things that, you know, and we follow all of the city um, requirements. We try to follow all of the guidelines, all of the rules. And then we're, you know, we're hit with this whammy that we're, not in compliance, um, and I'm not sure if it was a, what type of complaint um, initiated this, but it is concerning because we're, we're a business that's trying to be a present and employ people within this community. Okay, so let me start off and I will ask a few questions and make a few comments and then we'll go around and let the board directors ask you some questions or comments. So. My first question to you is, when did you buy this business? Uh, we actually, we inherited it from our father. And Okay. And what year? Uh, we probably took over uh, maybe like five, I think it's maybe like five or six years ago, he actually retired. And that's when he, he's, when he stepped out, he just, you know, hey, you guys can run it. I'm just walking away. I'm taking 
Okay. And then time so goes. let me explain just a little bit about this so you understand what, what this process is. So a conditional use, and probably because you didn't apply for the permit, you may not understand this. So let me explain it, if you will. A conditional use permit is granted to an applicant to have a business in an area that is not zoned for that area, okay? And so what it is is more or less a waiver and an agreement between the zoning division and the board of this board of public service to allow you to operate that business within that parameter. So in 2005, when your father came and applied for this conditional use, um, these were the conditions that were set onto this agreement, and it was between this board and him to operate duly within those requirements. Now, many members of this board have changed over time, and obviously you have changed as an as an owner from your father. But the bottom line to it is, is this is an ongoing agreement with the city that you will follow these conditions in order to have this business. Now, I will say this, there are ways to amend conditions with the zoning department and the building division. You can ask and request if that is possible. I cannot tell you today what all the methodology behind um, the conditions are because obviously I wasn't in this position in 2005 and you weren't there when it was originally applied for. Right. So, but what I will tell you is, is that the conditions are still valid today. Why did it take so long for someone to complain about it? No one knows the answer to that, right? But the answer is, is that someone did complain about it. It was brought to the city and these are the agreed upon conditions that are here. So where we are with this is it is up to this board to, you know, and you to have this conversation today to determine, you know, where we go from here. And so we have a number of options and just kind of explain this a little bit farther. If, you know, you want to work in good faith with the city uh, and you sound like you do because you talk about following all the other rules, then, you know, the first question I would suggest asking to the billing division and zoning is, is, is there a way that those conditions can be amended? And if so, how do we do that? I can't tell you whether they can or can't. That is not my business to do that, but they would be the first one um, if you wanted to do that. But today we are looking at the fact that you guys are in violation of a couple of conditions and our course of action will follow as such, you know, either we will give you an opportunity to cure this problem with the existing conditions. We will give you an opportunity to work with the billing division and zoning section to revise those conditions, or we will revoke your permit as it stands. And then you would have an opportunity to uh, appeal that with the board of adjustments. So that is kind of how the process, that is how the process works here. And I just want you to fully understand, you know, why we're here, what we're doing. And, you know, it's not up to this board to change the conditions today. We can only look at what is on paper, what you're telling us versus what the zoning department tells us and try to make a determination of what the best route is. So with that in mind, I guess I'm going to ask you a question. Out of all those options there, do you want to continue your business at this location? Oh, yes, yes, most definitely. Okay, and would you be willing to have a conversation with the building and zoning section about what may or may not be able to be changed within this conditional use? Uh, yes, absolutely. We could have an extensive conversation. Okay, all right. So we've established that you would be willing to work with the city on this and have a follow-up conversation, correct? Yes, yes. sir. Okay. At this time, I'm going to open the floor up for any comments or any questions from any of our board directors. I, I do have one uh, follow-up and extremely well said, uh, in my opinion, by President Bradley. Um, folks, do you, when when did you first hear, I, I don't have it in front of me, when did you first receive correspondence from the city of St. Louis that your 
you are not in compliance with your conditions. The letter was dated September 27th. So we didn't get it till probably the beginning of October and we're here on today's day. Thank you. I was just, I didn't know if there was a letter that I, I do recall that ma'am, the September 27th, but I didn't know if there was a letter prior to that. So that's the first letter you've received. That is correct. Thank you. And I will verify that that is correct by the evidence that we've uh, admitted today. Okay. Um, thank you, director. Other questions from any of our board members for conditional use permit holder. Okay. Seeing no further questions, thank you for your testimony. We will proceed along. At this time, the board asked if there's anyone present who would like to testify in opposition to this revocation that has not yet testified today. I don't see anyone else on the screen. I don't see anybody in the chat. And Michelle, again, there's no one in the room with you, correct? Correct. Okay. Let the record reflect that there's no one else present today uh, beyond the conditional use permit holder who wishes to testify uh, in opposition to this revocation. So at this time, the matter concerning hearing number 109696 is now closed and submitted, and we will deliberate this matter following the remaining agenda items. At this time, I'll ask the secretary to please call the roll. Director Coyle. Here, present. Director Davis? Present. Director Hayes? Present. Director Pearson is excused. Director Scobie? Here. Director Williams? President Bradley? Present. We have a quorum. I'll call this meeting order. Regular order of business from the president. Recommendation that approval be given as follows. Item one. Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission Transportation Enhancement Fund Program Agreement by and between the City of St. Louis, Missouri and the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission for the Louisiana Calm Street. Phase two, project number TAP-9901695. This agreement is authorized by ordinance 71701. Item two. Equipment Services Division Freightliner Equipment Service and Repair Contract with Truck Centers Incorporated. This contract provides service and repair on Freightliner's non-agriculture equipment through October 1st, 2026. The maximum not to exceed amount is $2,650,000. Item three, Supplemental Agreement Number 14 to PSA Number 1228, Civil, Structural, Surveying, Geotechnical, Design Services Cost Estimated, St. Louis Lambert International Airport with Engineering Design Source Incorporated in the amount of $63,970. This supplemental agreement is amended to modify the scope of work and is authorized by Ordinance 71657. Item four, maintenance agreement between MSD and the City of St. Louis for the issuance of a sewer permit by MSD for stormwater management facilities for the Forest Park Waterway, Waterway Project. Jefferson Lake Oxbox renovation located within Forest Park City Block 2022. Item five, temporary construction easement agreement by and between the Metropolitan Parks and Recreation District doing business as the Great River Greenway District and the City of St. Louis, Missouri to connect the greenway to existing sidewalk in Francis R. Slate Park. Item six, plans and specifications for Letty number 8765, concrete and brick removal, replacement and concrete sidewalk installation, BPS project SP-119 at an estimated cost of $900,000, authorized and funded by ARPA Fane SLFRP-1969 from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Forestry, recommendation that the following be approved subject to certain conditions. Application number 131931, request from Michael Rosenthal to fly a drone a fourth mile in all directions from the Art Museum in Forest Park from October 17th through November 17th, 2023. From the Director of Public Utilities, 
Recommendation that the board declares as emergency action the following. Repairs and winterizing to VAC truck 278-415. The estimated cost for the repairs is $6,867.39. Item two, all labor, parts, and equipment to isolate, clean, and to complete identified repairs to wet well number three, traveling screen machine. This critical equipment is located at the Howard Bend Water Treatment Plant. The traveling screen functions to filter out large debris, which, which would damage the pumps from the river water prior to pumping the water into the water treatment process. The estimated cost of this work is $79,191. From the Director of Streets, recommendation that the following be approved subject to certain conditions. Item one, petition number 6927, an ordinance to conditionally vacate clearance from Natural Bridge to Lexington. The Western 201.25 feet of the 20 foot wide East West Alley in city block 4441 WB, AKA 4441.10 as bounded by Natural Bridge, Landon, Lexington and Clarence. The Eastern 125.40 feet of the 20 foot wide East West Alley in city block 4445 as bounded by Natural Bridge, Clarence, Lexington, and Newstead. Item two, application number 131778, request from Clements Locks and Security to encroach with tables and chairs for a sidewalk cafe, utilizing 240 square foot with liquor on the Texas side of 2626 Cherokee. Item three, application number 131890, request from Fierce Fusion LLC, doing business as Zypher to encroach with cafe tables attached to the building, utilizing 25 square foot with liquor at 2203 through 2305 Cherokee Street. Previously, the department denied the request, but now rescinds the denial and has no op objection to the issuance of this permit. From the Director of Public Safety and Utilities, joint recommendation that the following be approved subject to certain conditions. Item one, request from Laura Kedrick to consolidate the lots at 5062, 5064, and 5068 Maple Avenue in City Block 5152. Item two, request from Doug All to consolidate lots one, two, and three of Haydock's Delmore Avenue addition at 5150 Delmore Boulevard in City Block 5051-A. Item three, Request from West End LLC, Grimes Consulting LLC to adjust the boundary line between 5875 and 5881 Cates Avenue in City Block 3861. Item four, request from Jennifer w Russell to consolidate the lots at 7227 through 7229 Pennsylvania Avenue into one parcel in City Block 3039. From the Directors of Public Utilities and Streets, joint recommendation that the following be approved subject to certain conditions. Request from Procter & Gamble Manufacturing Company to remove the existing sign and the construction of a new monument sign for the Procter & Gamble facility at 110 East Grand Avenue. Joint recommendation that one application from AT&T be approved subject to certain conditions. Application number 00177, for 3835 Foundry Way. From the department, from the, the Director of Public Safety, we have two conditional use permits to be approved subject to certain conditions. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the board. My name is Sandra Long, zoning specialist for the city, and I'll be representing the building commissioner at today's meeting. For board order 766 transmitted herewith are recommendations by the following conditional use agenda applications. Approval with conditions is recommended for two applications, 1910 Hebert and 2601 Market Street. I request that these recommendations be approved as permitted. Thank you, Sandra. Are there any questions or comments on any of today's conditional uses? I move to approve today's conditional uses. Gobi? Second, Davis. Thank you, directors. Can you call the roll, please? Director Coyle. Aye. Director Davis? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Scobie? 
All right. Director Williams. President Bradley. Aye. Today's conditional uses are approved. Hearing number 109696 for 1814 North Band of Enter St. Louis American Salvage. We heard from the Deputy Building Commissioner uh, concerning the violations of two conditions. Number three, the removal of tires from vehicles and the storing of tires and disposal of tires. And condition number four, which is um, vehicles to be placed uh, off the ground on some type of racks. We also, and they are still in violation at this moment. We also heard from uh, our conditional use permit holders that they recently obtained this business uh, from their father. And there is an, a, a misunderstanding, if you will, or not an understanding of exactly what the conditions of this permit that was approved in 2005 are. And so with an attempt to explain and discuss this between the individuals, uh, it's my opinion that they are willing to have a conversation with the billing division, the zoning section, uh, understand the permit fully and discuss uh, a couple of the conditions that may not be uh, actually in, in uh, line with today's standards for a salvage yard. Now, again, there's nothing that says that the zoning or billing division will amend those standards because they may be there for a reason unbeknownst to us. But at this time, I believe that the good faith would be there to um, for them to speak with that group before we render a decision. So there was no one uh, to testify uh, either for or against this revocation. So with that brief summary, I'll open the floor up for any discussion. I'm, I'm in agreement with you, um, President Bradley. I would like to give them some time to see if some solution could be worked out so that they could remain in business. I, uh, I agree with both of you. When I asked the question about the correspondence being sent, it, we're talking about, although the violations as presented are very concerning, um, provi providing three, a little over three weeks notice to shut or to revoke a conditional use permit and that business uh, that's been in existence for all those years, I think would, I don't think that's prudent. And I would, unless there's, are there any further questions? Cause I'd be happy to make a motion. Any further questions from any of our board members? Seeing none, is there a motion? Yes, President, I make a motion that we provide the business owners with 60 days, um, hoping and trusting that they have the same good faith effort that they said to you when you posed all the options. So my motion is give them 60 days to correspond with another city agency and rectify this matter. Second, Davis. Thank you, directors. Is there any further discussion or questions before we vote? Say none. Can you call the roll, please? Director Coyle? Aye. Director Davis? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Scobie? Aye. President Bradley? Aye. The conditional use holder will be given 60 days. I'd like to turn your attention to our main minutes from last Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Are there any questions or comments on the meeting minutes as presented? See, none will ask for a motion to approve, please. Motion to approve minutes, Davis. Second, Coyle. Thank you, Director. Can you call the roll, please? Director Coyle? Aye. Director Davis? Aye. Director Hayes? Abstain. Thank you. Director Scobie? Abstain. Thank you. President Bratton? Aye. The meeting minutes are approved. I'd like to turn your attention to today's BPS meeting agenda. Are there any questions or comments on the meeting agenda today? Motion to approve, Hayes. Second, Davis. Thank you, Director. Can you call the roll, please? Director Coyle? Aye. Director Davis? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Scobie? Aye. Director Williams? 
President Bratton. Aye. Today's agenda is approved. Before we adjourn, are there any questions or comments from any of our board directors? I'd like to formally congratulate um, Director Coyle on his appointment. Earlier this week, he has been a formidable interim, a wonderful partner, and a great friend. And we just congratulate him and continue to wish him well. We are all behind you um, as you continue to lead us. Thank you. Dr. Maddy, thank you for that comment. That is duly noted. And I certainly appreciate that and agree with it. Congratulations, Director. We are glad to have had you and will have you hopefully for the long term. So right. thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Truly appreciate it. All right. Any further comments before we adjourn? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. So moved, Hayes. Second, Davis. All right. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.